Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to this week's episode of the Business Start Hard podcast. In this episode, we've got Jason Holmes, who owns uh, Fitness Work Bidford. In this in this pod, we talk about Jason's beginnings before the actual gym, afterwards uh, dealing with COVID, and you know a few other interesting topics. Uh, hope you enjoy, and then let me know what you think. All right, Jason. So, f- firstly, firstly, more I'll, like we'll get to your to your to your gym, but the first part I want to talk about was. Um, like sort of, have you always been in? You haven't you you haven't always been in the fitness industry, haven't you? You started off. I haven't. I've 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 already always been into it in regards to a, for my own hobby and my own my own like passion for it, but I haven't necessarily always worked in it. In the gym, worked oh, okay. in it. Um, when I left school, I worked in like hotel gyms, so it wasn't really a gym. It's more of a, a swimming pool, like um, yeah. leisure club. Um, okay. Dabbled in that a little bit. Went back and forth for a few jobs, then worked in a couple of gyms here and there, got experience. And then I kind of went away for it for a bit and then threw myself in the deep end and opened my own one. So, oh, okay, yeah. perfect. So, so touching upon that, so when, when you, when you left school, what, 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 so what sort of, um, what sort of jobs and industries did you go into then? So when I first left, I just, when I was 16, I just went into full time work straight away, just at the supermarket. I think either I think there was a lot at that age. I think you either leave school, you go to college, and you do uni or whatever, or you just kind of go straight into a full time job, don't you? I think that's kind of yeah, the that's the, transition. yeah, that's the norm, isn't it? Um, so what did I do after that? I did that, and then I think that after that, I went into a leisure club role for a year or two in like a hotel, and then in between from that, I kind of had a few different jobs. It was like I worked in a warehouse, I worked in a phone shop. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I was just kind of dabbling. I, again, it was the uncertainty of not really knowing what I wanted to do. So you kind of, I think, I think you kind be, of dabble. I think to be quite honest with you, mate, I've like I had uh, I had Alex on last week. That's the norm. Like a lot of people were, you know, even 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 George. Like we were talking, and it's like a lot of us through that period. I think it was from when you leave school to about sixteen to about. 2021 are just drifting like because you don't know you don't really know what you want to go into what industry you actually want to be in so you're just drifting aren't you and, and, and yeah 100 like something comes up you apply for it you you, you track you, you 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 swap around a little bit like when when i left school i did work in a call center with george for example we both did yeah. the same sort of thing um and that's kind of i just did it for a bit longer and then yeah i worked for a, a company that was like um property surveyors which which is what I foreseen at the time being where I'd stay and what I would what I would work as a career, but they ended up made it, made me redundant, and that was kind of a mindset switch. Then it was okay. weird because when they made me redundant, the one time that I'd kind of put myself in a, in, in a mind frame that I'm going to stay here, we'll see it out for the long term and try and make something of it, they went they went I don't I don't really know what happened there. They made me redundant anyway. Um, how, how old were you at, th- at this time? It made me redundant just before my daughter was born. So, no, it was no, it could have been. Yeah, yeah, it was just when she was just after she was born. So that was two and a half years. So twenty five. Okay, so then what what came after that? So I went to work for um, a flooring company to be a trainee contract manager, which I actually enjoyed. That to be honest, um, it was tough. It was tough, and then and then it was soon after that the opportunity came up for this. And I knew the decision had to be made. It was kind of now or, or not because if I, I was kind of, because I was a trainee, I was kind of getting to that point where I was transitioning not to be a trainee. A trainee, yeah. So it was kind of like, it, that kind of made it more risky uh, uh, to a certain extent because okay, the money so, was about to go up and change. But. Okay, so we'll get into sort of the business, but did you not, so when you, when did the, when the idea of starting a business start getting into your head? Because obviously now you're in this job where you're training, you're progressing. When did you mm. start thinking about starting your own, starting your own business? Well, owning the gym was always more of a dream. It was never something that I ever thought would ever happen. Okay. Um, it was never something I ever, even though it was always like, oh, imagine having your own gym. It was kind of that conversation. I used to speak about it all the time. And then, we, me and my, well, my partner came in, got, long story short, she got some inheritance money. And then that's when the, that's when she, we, me and her spoke about it. And then okay. even then it was still an idea because we had the one step, we we're, were in a position where we could make that transition if we wanted to. And then, yeah. And then I spoke about it very casually to Jack that owns a fitness works brand. And then that's kind of 
that's where it oh. took took off from there. Really. So, with, so you know, you were talking about you had to make the decision from like from transitioning to the job you were at before to this. Did you not just think? Because I think you, you mentioned that you just had a you just had a kid. Were yeah. you thinking? Oh wait, maybe I'll stick it out because this is a job. It's guaranteed income. Oh mate, yeah, I was. Um, I don't know how to put it. I was genuinely pooing myself. To be <laughs> yeah, I was. was uh, I was stressed. Um, but again, it was kind of like. It was weird because even though we went through the process of opening a gym, there's quite a lot of things I had to do. So even in the early stages of just getting quotes and finding finding a building, first and foremost, you, you casually look online, you do it in your spare time, you work in your day job, and then in the evenings you'll look online, wait to see if something comes up. And none of it's real. You go view that you go view places. And even then, it, you're still working your full time job, so nothing really clicks in your oh, mind. Okay, so you still, so you were still in, actually, you were still actually working your full time job, yeah. whilst, whilst preparing everything. Okay. Yeah. So it was only that, only like just before, like it was difficult one really because with with where I worked, I wanted to be as transparent as I could, but I couldn't tell them to the last minute really because in this sort of thing things could fall through and it's one of those if I told them early they would have found a replacement because they would have had to because they're a busy company they would have needed it do you know what I mean oh, okay oh, okay so when you so 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 okay so you're at the point where you're still working at the company and you think mm. okay I want to start it so what were the things so to start a gym what were the things you had to think about because I think you mentioned a few things there like location all that stuff. What were the things you had to actually get together before you could leave and start out on your own? Um, so first thing is um, an ideal location. So as soon as you figure out a location, that being said, the location that I would have, the, the location that we're in now is probably the location that I would have had last on my list. It was weird how that turned out. But okay, yeah, me, so tell location. Me, tell me a bit about that then. So what was what was that with the location then? Because you're, so, you're based in Bidford, aren't you? So I'm, like, yeah, I'm based in Bidford, which is where I live now. Yeah. Um, so we had just moved here. Obviously, being in Bidford is a perfect slot because I live here. So, I'm, and it turned out like it's the best spot for me because I'm always here and I need to be here by quite quickly if I need to be. Um, but there is there is another gym here in the same estate that I'm in. So, like it, it never really crossed my mind. Where was your first choice? Because you said that was your last choice. Where was well, your weird, first choice? Weirdly, in location? we're in Bidford. I knew local. It's not that local, but Shipston was an area that I considered because I knew they didn't really have anything like it. They had no independent gym there. Okay. But then I went to go look at a, a spot over there. It was expensive. And the, when I when I drove from Bidford to there, I, realized, I quickly realised how not practical it's going to be because I'm going to have to be there early, which it's an hour, it's about 45 minute drive, I think. So I just realised I have to be here a lot of the time in the first year or two to, to, to build it. To build it up. So yeah. I, I, I realised quite quickly, one, the, the units available are there are very scarce. It's not a very big place. Um, and two, I just knew I couldn't manage to travel. So when, to, when I went to go look at my first one, I realised quite quickly that that's not going to be suitable. Um, Stratford, Stratford crossed my mind, but they have quite a lot already there. In terms um, of have a lot of gyms there, do you mean? Yeah, independent gyms. So they have yeah. four, three or four. I know if I had the right space in Stratford, I could make it a hit. But obviously, the bigger the space you have, the more money it costs. It so you have to too. kind of base your space, your size of the size of the place you want. It's all good having a five, six, seven thousand square foot, but you've got to pay the rent on that. And then you've also got to kit it out. So the more space you have, the more expensive it gets. Was there ever any any sort of concerns with planning? Because I was speaking to another friend of mine who I'm on pod, um, all about his gym. He t he talked about he had trouble with getting like planning from the council. Was that ever I like a, a thing? I think every independent gym in the, in the ever has a problem with planning. Okay. They, they make it very any. I reckon if you speak to any gym owner, they'll say that planning was not easy. Um, it never is. I knew that anyway because obviously I've, I'm a franchise, so I already had. Jack telling me, mate, planning will be the hardest thing because he's done it three times already. So what I did with planning is I tried to do it myself and they just basically threw it back at me. So I was like, do you know what? I, I don't have time to be trying to learn something new here. So I just hired someone to do my planning yeah. for me. Um, and that, that really paid off because it was a lot less hassle then. It was still hassle 
they still came back with problems, parking being the number one problem. Um, I don't know, planning officers love to moan about parking. I think, <laughs> I think their job role is just to moan about parking. <laughs> yeah. um, but we, uh, we got there in the end. I, I have a lot of spaces, so I knew that's why when I looked at this place, when you look at a unit, I, have to look to, I had to look at it like planning, do I foresee parking being an issue? And I knew when I looked at it, it wouldn't be. Oh. Um, so that was, again, another point to where when I looked at this, okay, it's in Bidford. I didn't imagine that we were going to go to Bidford. The space was perfect. The reception area was already made for me, really. And the parking was perfect. So it was kind of... So the start, like, it was that, kind of like the, that, the that was kind line. of it. I kind of knew once I view the unit that I think is perfect, that's where we'll go. So that's kind of how we ended up in Bidford. Okay, so, so then what was the story then? Did you just go into work and say, look... I'm starting this and get going. Like, did you figure out we're going to open this time and I'll get going? So I kind of, as it was getting to the later end, I kind of, we were kind of getting to a point where we knew November, December was going to be the opening time, roughly. Okay. But there was, still, there was still a lot of things to be signed and agreed. I was having problems with a, a few agreements with kit, kit finance and things like that. So I couldn't necessarily tell my, my the boss that I was I'm I'm leaving because if I couldn't fix that problem, I I could have been opening with very little kit. So it would have ruined everything. I would have yeah. left my job and had nothing to go to, to go to work go at. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but anyways, as as you know, word got around because I was having to rely on social media for different things, advice, find finding people and doing the social media was a massive help. It just so happened that he got wind of it before I told him. So Ooh. we had a conversation. But he was fine about it. And when, 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 he, when we ch chatted about it, I think he was a bit upset. But then when I explained to him the processes that go into it, he understood it and it was fine. It was fine. Oh, okay. Okay, I suppose so that, I suppose that ended I just well. had to explain the situation. And I, he understood this. You know, I have a daughter to feed. I have a mortgage to pay. I can't. I, I couldn't say I'm leaving too early on because things, things up until the last second can fall on its face, yeah. and I couldn't run that risk. I was always going to give him adequate notice that is required, but I think the what he found out via socials, which there are certain posts that I put up, which I kind of knew that would there's a good chance it will get back. Oh. I, I knew that, so I, I took that risk knowingly. But um, yeah, unfortunately, that's the way. It, but we 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 didn't. We didn't actually. It was no fallout about it. Oh, but okay. He was. He actually helped me a, a few things as well on, on on the way out. So it was fine. Okay. What What did your family think? Like, oh, you mentioned you're missing the shoes. Quite supportive. What did like your friends and then your family think? Like, what was the for, to start with? What What was the conversation um, with your missus to say? Hey, I want to start this. What What was that like? Uh, very casual. Like it wasn't like the first conversation was very casual. And then the conversations from there on was still very casual. I did all the viewings because this is, this is essentially is what I've, I've always trained in gyms. Gyms have always been my thing and it wasn't necessarily Emma's. So she kind of let me go do the viewings. I did everything and she was just like, look, I'm all for it. If you think, if you think it's going to work, let's try it. It's an opportunity. It's an opportunity. Uh, my parents were very good about it. I don't think that like, like, Obviously, we're, we're only a small independent gym. I don't want anybody to listen to this and think that I'm talking like it's a massive empire, but to me, it, it is mine. Yeah. Um, and it was still a big financial financial like expense. Investment, So yeah. when I told them, I think my dad was a bit more like, you should put that money on your mortgage. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's that, yeah. kind, of, that, that kind of... And he wasn't wrong. That's not wrong. Like, yeah, I suppose, wrong I suppose from his standpoint, it's not wrong. He just, I suppose he's trying to help. He's trying, that, the way he... Yeah, he, yeah. He yeah. Like, that's best. a safe yeah. bet. Which it, yeah. it, which it is, which is normally the, that, that's how I've always before this how I've always been. Just take the safe route, man. Where yeah. Emma's completely different. Emma's like, whatever, let's just try it. And I think oh. she because she supported me so much through it. That's why I didn't really doubt it throughout throughout it. Um, my mum was always supportive about it, regardless of what I decided to do. I think my mum was very much in the respect of like you have you have a chance to have your own business here. It's up to you. Do you know what I mean? But my dad was like even though he was all for it and he's helped me loads here. Um, I think at first, very early on, it was like, oh, you should probably put that money on your mortgage. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that's the, yeah. Which I think that's, that, I think that any... It's sensible, yeah. Anybody that wants to play safe, that, that just makes sense. Do you know what I mean? To put that money on your mortgage, it will help you in the long run. Which, you know, 
he might be right, but at the end of the day, I've, I've got, got an amazing gym now, which, yeah, it's closed, but hopefully when we open, it'll thrive again. Okay, so when you when you when you thought about starting your own gym because you mentioned like your you know your your franchise did you have a model did you have an image of a gym that like had you been to a gym and thought okay this is what i want my one to look like i take inspiration from loads of them so like if you come here it's very similar to a lot of the other fitness works but there are subtle differences that i take not so they're not differences but like they're all each one of them I'm the only franchise at the moment, but each one of them have their own uniqueness. And mine's no different. Obviously, I own it. So pretty much I just do what I want to do in there, make it look how I want to. Um, but it, I take a lot of inspiration by, by how I run this place. I take a lot of inspiration how it, how the kit that I buy from loads of different gyms that I've trained at over the years. I've trained at tons of them, um, which then also corresponds in the atmosphere that I have here. Is, is kind of how I wanted it to be because I knew before I opened I could have one piece of kit in there but as long as the atmosphere is thriving people will love it it doesn't do you know what I mean so like I've found the good balance between me being present here all the time has helped that because everyone feels like they know the owner now okay so so what do you mean by atmosphere like gym atmosphere what do you what do you just, mean by just that? when you come in a train especially at peak time at five six o'clock there's a buzz about it it's not stale you walk in and you'll, you'll, you'll know everybody because they will talk to each other. And you, if, you, if you come to train here for a month, say, I'm pretty certain you better walk in, you better point at whoever is in that corner there and say, oh, they train for this. Because everyone communicates, oh, that guy trains for this way. Because we have, fortunately, I've, I've, even though we've got limited space here, I've managed to find the balance of, so if you're into bodybuilding, you can come and train here. But if you're into Olympic lifting, you've got a perfect space for that. And if you're into your CrossFit, you can you can come over here. I don't even know. Yeah, if you're into CrossFit, you can come and do that sort of thing here too. So there's such a diverse amount of people here. It's just kind of made such a good atmosphere to come in and train in. The only way I can explain it is um, it's really hard to explain. But if you're going to like a pure gym or any of the big big companies like Anytime Fitness and stuff like that, they're all great. They're all really great kit about gyms, to be honest. But people are very busy on, on their in their own way in there. Like no one really. Oh, okay, there's going to be exceptions to the rule, but if you go in a lot of places like that, there tends to be the kit's amazing, but the atmosphere is not there. It's because everyone's so busy doing their own thing, in and out, scan in, scan out. But there's no interaction at the desk for a lot of places. Yeah. But I'm here all the time. Everyone knows what I expect of people in there, so it's very rarely a problem. So, so yeah, that's that, kind of how I build it. So is that like how you build, like, a, is that like how you build like a gym community? Because what well, I yeah. mean, I suppose it's probably community from, being community being the right word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because because I suppose because I'm from there, like on socials, I see a lot of people going there, but it's it's always the same people. And I was speaking to to a friend who uses the gym, and he was saying like you know everyone that goes there. I don't know if it's because it's just a small town, everything, but you know everyone yeah. that go you know that goes there. So is that is that sort of something you looked at to like to yeah, build like there's I could 80, 80 to eighty five percent of my members, even night, I'd say I could probably tell you something about them. Do you know what I mean? That'd be something that I could say if you said to me, "Oh, tell me something about." that guy over there, I could probably give you some information because I speak to everybody at length and I get to know people, which is important. It's important. So Relationships what, are important. Uh, yeah, I, I would say so. So so now get, getting back to like um, when you started out, what was your marketing or what did you do to get it out there that, hey, I've, 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 I've opened this gym? What was the marketing plan? So social media, um, the fitness works team as a whole helped me out a lot with that because I had a bit more experience. So we launched a lot of like um, images that were made, I don't know what they're called, they're like 3D pictures, I don't know what you call them, but they're kind of what the gym should look like, so we were able to put them images out to give people an, an idea of what to expect. Um, we did an early bird offer, which if you joined before we opened, you'd get it at a discounted rate, which kind of went okay, I think. And then we did a, a phase two early bird, which kind of, and we just kept using, Instagram was the key one, Facebook, um, I think we did a few Instagram and Facebook ads. Just things like that, really, to get it out there. I obviously use my own socials because I know people that train at gyms. Yeah. Um, I had a lot of my, my friends. My friends plugged it as much as they can. That was it, really. Leafleting in Bidford. That's... I did the old, just the old school leafleting stuff, which it's always, it's always an interesting one for me because I came into the estate 
as a gym where there was there's actually two gyms in this estate one's a small crossfit one so they're a completely different market to me so it doesn't matter yeah. they're actually pretty much next door um but the other open gym which we are is just a stone throw away so it was a weird one because we're in a village and there's village mentality is very much like people are very loyal to what they've already always what known they, yeah 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 so there was 100 percent, without a doubt a barrier that i found hard to break with certain people but i've been here now for just over a year i'm i, I try and be as active on socials as i can i've done things for, i've done things in the community i've got to know people i've got to know local businesses i go in i speak to them i build relationships with people um and it's it was it's slowly paying off like people, not necessarily paying off in regards to members, but people are at least coming in the door to have a look. Yeah. Where beforehand, I was trying to give leaflets outside Budgeons here. And if they're a member at the gym, they wouldn't even take a leaflet off me. Yeah, yeah. I'm only giving it's, you a leaflet. It's like that though, isn't it? Because like, especially like in small towns, people are loyal to what they've got. But in general, like... For me, I like, I like going to the same gym. Like, once I find a good gym, I, I don't think I'll be switching. So it's, it's like that mentality, isn't it? It is, yeah. So I knew I knew it would be a battle. Um, and I, I don't blame people for that. Because like you said, I, I, I wasn't funny about it because I understood you, you you know what you know. And that's it. If you, don't, if you, if you like where you're at, you're not going to change. But people have found the transition here enjoyable. We have diff- we have slightly different markets. Like I have a lot of guys here that will train. If you're into your strength and your weightlifting and things like that, you probably find that I'm gonna be you're gonna favour my 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 gym. That's because oh, that's yeah. how I built it. It's for per- people like that. Um, where if you prefer the treadmill and just just the running and that sort of, and the cardio side of things, you're probably gonna favour the other place. But that that's 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 what it's about, isn't it? You've got to have your unique selling point, and that's us. Okay. Okay. So what um. In terms of what's the difference, so what's the di- what differentiates you as a gym? So from your competitors, if I'm if I'm Dell, I'm brand new in Bidford and I'm looking for a gym. What differentiates you from the competition? You know, the people across the street. What makes you unique? It's yeah, it's just that really. It's the it's the equipment that we have and the site that we have for for anybody that that wants to wants to wants to use a functional fitness trainer. It's a, it's basically a cross it's a cross between everything here so you can come here and do multiple things where other gyms are like like the other gym down the road they're very dominant with their cardio pieces where me i put a lot of pride in the in the equipment that i have any weight equipment i've got a lot lot more of that so we kind of cater for that side of things so anybody that listens to crossfit powerlifting weightlifting bodybuilding that's kind of who we're going to take who we're going to who we are going to appeal to should i say Okay. Okay. But that's 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 how I've always thing is it was difficult because when you when I knew when I opened here that it's an interesting one because you can open a gym and you can base it on what you think will sell. But I knew if if even though I even though I, I know the market, so I know weightlifting right now is really popular, but it just so happens that's my love as well. Like I love that and that's my whole passion. But if I opened somewhere that wasn't somewhere I would train I'd never be enthusiastic about it. Yeah, I suppose that's like you know, with with any business, you actually have to like it. Yeah, I it, absolutely love it here. But if you if you look at the pictures of the gym from when I opened in December last, uh, not last year, now it'd be 2019 to now, the changes that I've made in 12 months is crazy because I can't. My, what my members appreciate is that because it's my full time. Tra- I train here full time as well, so. I'm always investing in new pieces because I'm like, okay, do you know what? I want this. I, oh. I want this. And it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm constantly like that. Even though sometimes the bank balance is trying to tell me to calm down a little calm bit. Calm down, yeah. It's, sh- it's hard because I love it. And I'm like, yeah, cool. When I buy something, it benefits them as well. Yeah, But I suppose then it's like, you're making it into a gym that you want to go to, isn't it? You actually Yeah, but I also, I also, like, I also completely take on board what members want. And I've done yeah. So like, I always say to my members, if I get something which will suit 30, 40% of our members, just know that your, tar- your turn's coming. Do you know what I mean? So like I have members that want a few of the pieces that, that we haven't got yet. That, that time's coming where we're going to get them pieces. So it's, it's I, unfortunately, I, I haven't got unlimited funds, so I can't buy everything can't at the same time. So I have to buy things as they yeah. come up. 
and certain pieces come up before others. So that's the way it is. But like during this lockdown, even though things are a bit tighter now, and I've got to be a bit more cautious given the uncertainty of how long we're going to be closed, I'll come out of it with 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 something new, and my members will appreciate it for that. Okay, so so you, so you started up. I think it was uh, December twenty nineteen. So yeah. that's just like just like sort of over a year ago. And what um what was obviously because we'll get into it, but year one's been really di- really unorthodox, hasn't it? Because obviously, COVID hit. What, what was that like when you know when COVID hit in about March? What was that like? The first uh, lockdown. It was strange because we'd only been open three and a half, well, three four months. And then we closed. But I think for the same for everybody is none of us knew what was really going on. It was all new to us. Yeah. So it didn't really knock me. I, I was a bit like, okay, we're closing. But I think we all thought it was going to be a couple of weeks and we'll be back to normal again. Never would imagine back then we'll be in January 2021 in lockdown again. But at first it was fine. I, it was fine. I just thought it'd be a few weeks. I took the opportunity to spend some time with my daughter, which I'd never normally have had. And then that time kind of progressed from two weeks to three weeks to four months, didn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, it did help, not going to lie, it did help that it was summer. It kind of really nice weather in the end. Yeah, so we had that 30 degree weather. That helped a lot. I was out walking a lot. And the government gave out grants to kind of help the businesses, which helped us a lot, which helped me do what I've done in the gym and also help us survive it. Um. Oh, but yeah, so- when we came when we came back out of it, when we came back out of lockdown, I'd lost probably seventy percent of members. So, really? what, so what I knew put, I was going to have a battle. What did you put that down to? The the seventy percent. What, what did you put that down to? Just it's just as the, as the months went on. Bear in mind, we'd only been open what three or four months, so we hadn't really built up a full membership base anyway, and people hadn't. Not everybody had got to know me that well. Do you know what I mean? It, so. A lot of them dropped off because the thing is they dropped off because they couldn't afford to pay because the supporters during the time because their, their jobs were lost as well. People lost their yeah. jobs as well. So that's kind of, it was no reflection on us. It was just their circumstances were just as bad. So it was yeah. just one of those. Um, but so I knew, so what I did was when I knew we were going to be opening, I started doing view round, like show rounds a week before gym opened. So I got people ready, signed up the week prior. I was here. I was here like all the time, like, the lockdown gave us opportunities to change the gym for me to replan. And then I got really, I got on socials. I was posting up things I was doing. I was letting people know what I was doing. And it turned out that when we reopened, I had more interest than I did before. So it kind of helped us coming out of it. Coming out of it. Oh. You know, we built our numbers back up within about three days. Really? Okay. That's, I suppose yeah. that was Andy. So then, so then what was, because I remember, I remember actually post lo- post the first lockdown, the gi- the gym I I remember the gym that I go to was packed for about a mo- you know about mm. a month or two because everyone's like okay want to get want to lose back, yeah, yeah want to lose the weight we gained during the first lockdown so did what what was it like sort of from that until and until sort of the second lockdown was business up and you know yeah to be out? to be honest it was on a a slow and steady increase in members. So it was, it was, it, we were on the first few weeks was really busy. I had loads of show rounds. People were coming in, viewing round and our membership numbers were, were, were slowly rising. Like I said, when we first opened, we were, we're the new, we we're essentially the new place in town. It was very hard to break people in. But I think lockdown gave people opportunity to come up, possibly get out of their contracts that they're in and just have an opportunity to think, oh, do you know what? Let's go try a new place and just see what it's like. Um, Cause I saw so many new faces. That, that the first two weeks it was so busy but then it kind of leveled out as i expect i expected the first two weeks to go like that and then it kind of just level off um but week on week we're increasing numbers only about one or two like we're even when we went to this lockdown we're, we're still not full at capacity but i treat things week on week and as long as numbers aren't dropping yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm okay you know they're not quite where we need it to be however eight week on week i was positive and i was like Perfect. We're in a good spot. January's coming. January, February being key months for fitness. By mid this year, I expected to be at a certain... I had a goal in my head to be at a certain number of members. And I was confident that was going to happen. But I, at that point, I hadn't foreseen another lockdown coming. I remember that... So the last time we spoke was just before the second lockdown, I think. What did... Because 
or was it? Was it? I think it was just. What, what did yeah, second, it was just before. I think. Yeah. How was? How did that affect? Because obviously you've come out of the first one. Businesses started to grow again. How did that affect you? Um, I think because there was a lot of confidence of it only being four weeks, which it turned out to be only four weeks. It was okay, and I met, all my members took by me pretty much. Um, okay. I lent out. I, I lend out my kit anyway to my active members, so I do as much as I can. Obviously, I've only got certain kit and. It's hard to stretch it all, but I do all I can to keep as many members as I can happy and ticked over. Oh, okay. because I'll, I'll bend over backwards for any, but I don't mind if I, if, you know, I do what I, I do what I can. So I did that, gave out all my kit, pretty much had nothing left, and then we reopened. Pretty much, we kind of just left. We kind of started. We lost a couple, but we kind of started off pretty much where we left off. So it wasn't too bad. Um. Obviously, we had a, we did have a drop off, like, but it it wasn't catastrophic. The, yeah, the worst thing. Yeah. So then what? So then then after that, going into December, and then obviously they announced sort of the lockdown, and obviously now no one really knows how long it's going to be because you're hearing you know you're hearing different things, and obviously they're change they're changing week you know week on week. What's that? What's that sort of? What's the effect of that been then? Uh, to be honest, I I was okay at first. But last week, I just had a couple of days where I was just really down about it, like complete transparency. I think anybody that's got a business that's relatively new, and especially me, I'm not that experienced. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm, I'm still new. It takes you a few years to kind of get your head around everything. Yeah. And then, you know, I've got a mortgage. I've got a daughter. Do you know, I've got everything like that. So last week, I had a bit of a week like, I, was, I can't believe this is happening again. Um like I, I came in here to obviously I can come in and train, which I'm fortunate. I'm very, for, I say I'm fortunate, but obviously I built it. But I, I didn't even want to come in and train. I was just like, this is a, this is a nightmare. But you kind of not, you get yourself out of it. And I was like, fine, we'll just, I'll see this week out, which I did. And then this week I'm a lot, I'm a lot more positive about it. We just got to, just got to grind through it. There's, there's a chance that this week I'm going to find, I'll just find some part time work, keep myself busy, keep myself ticking over. For me, I would go work at, right now. If so, I'd go work full time. Uh, no, no disrespect to it. I'd go work at McDonald's wherever full time if it meant that I could reopen this gym better than it closed. It was before. Okay, so then, so then obviously, what's happened now is you've had to like reevaluate all the targets. Have you sort of got any? You know, I suppose it's it's difficult without actually knowing. Yeah. They haven't, you know, because they've given us like around February, but. I'm hearing around you know March April time. Yeah, March. Yeah, that, is it has yeah, it been? I, spo- I suppose then has it? Have you looked far ahead to reopening, or is it just now you're taking it as it comes? Uh, taking it as I come, but I also I'm gonna be a, um, you know I'm always wanting to improve, but um, but that sometimes comes at a heavy cost. So this yeah. time I'm just taking a step back. I'm just gonna try and keep things ticking over here. I will do. I will make improvements. I will because that's just the way I am. But I'm just gonna just let like just stay stay tight. Do do what I can for the members. Give out as much kit as I can for members, so they can keep ticking, paying over their membership to keep us going, and then just hopefully we can just reopen with minimal damage. Really, it's 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 really difficult to plan yeah. when you don't know what's happening. Like one week, like like you just said, one week. It, when he first announced it, he said mid February possibly, and then within three days he's talking about the thirtieth, the, the then the March. Yeah, and for me the hardest part is like, is is, is the willingness just to keep switching things and leaving us just kind of in the dark really. That's the thing, isn't it? It's difficult to plan. Like if if we if they said March and they meant March, you could actually plan to say to yourself like, okay, I'll be. I'll be starting up in March, but you can't actually do that, can you? No, it's. Uh, I'm, I'm. I'm confident March is. We got at the at the latest. It's going to be late March. I can't see it. Foresee, I can't foresee how they can keep it any longer than that. I, yeah, but I, I, I've said that so many times now, and they they they've, then, yeah, they've, they've, they've done they've completely done opposite to what I thought. The, if the four week lockdown, I was adamant it would get gyms will be able to stay open even to the night before. I was like, nah, they'll, they'll let gyms stay open because that was such a cry for gyms staying open. See, um, like, see, see yeah. actually, to be fair, like with, with us, because you know when they did the whole tier stuff, 
I was yeah. quite happy because we were in tier, I think it was, what was it? What, what, I can't remember what tier one, tier three. And you could still go to the gym. There was limits and there was restrictions, but you could still go to the gym. Still it's fine. And it helped because like, you can still stay in your routine. This yeah. last one where you, you literally you can't do it, it's killed me off. I've I got to be honest because I find it hard to work out when I'm not in the gym. So this last one uh, killed me. It's probably- honestly, my, honestly I, I think the hardest thing, I think this time was I, I genuinely like feel ultra bad for my members that they can't come train. Um, and as much as I'd like to be that person that would say, do you know what? I'm not going to listen. I'm going to stay open. I'm going to stand up. A £10,000 fine would be detrimental to a company like me. Very much, yeah, yeah. So, and as much as I, I would love to be that person that stands up like some of the gyms have, it would just be, and I know I know some of them are saying, oh, you won't have to, I'm not, I can't risk it. It's just a massive risk. But my hat goes off to all the gyms that have kind of fought it. Um, and I completely get the mental health argument too um, and the benefits it brings. And I know it was up for debate in parliament today about gyms, but they did it again last time and, Nothing happens, so, yeah, so I've kind of lost result, interest in hearing it, to be honest. Yeah. Okay, so before we move on to the Q, the Q&As, my one big thing is, so wh- what's the vision? So we come back and do this three, four, five years down the line. What's the vision? Where do you want to be then in that time? So my short term now, I, I want to see this year out in a positive way. So when we reopen, I want to get to the end of the year, but like, do you know what? It was a rough start, but it's worked out really well. Um and I think I'm just going to take baby steps into it now because, like I said before, my goal is still exactly the same. I want to have, like the gym right now is 3,000 square foot. My dream is to have a 10,000 square foot gym in the end. Okay. So, yeah, that's, that, that's, that's, the, that's the whole dream. Whether, whether you know, that's, that's a big one. That's a big expense. And it's, a big, it's a big ass. But that's what I want. Okay. So I just want to have a training facility that people will travel from different areas for. I do I have one now that people do travel from different areas for, but like there's a few gyms in the UK that people will travel all over the country to go. Like there's, there's a gym that I want to go try try out up north, which is a three hour drive. Which when this is all over, I want to go over and try it out. I want to be I want to be that gym that people Wait. will be like. Do you know what? I, I know like it's a couple of hours, it. but I, I want to go try it. Okay, perfect. So I put out some so, some some Q and A's. We've got I think it's about five. So the first one is. What is the biggest obstacle slash challenge you had to overcome in the startup process? So you, I'll let you go first on that one. What was the biggest challenge? Uh, yeah, so that would have been planning. Planning. And unless you've got a big lump sum of money, finance can be a battle. If Because obviously gym kit is expensive. Yeah. Um, finance isn't that. We were fortunate that we had a chunk anyway, so it wasn't that difficult in the end. But if you're if you're going into it with with the minimum, it's going to be an uphill battle to find a company, especially as a new company, as a new starter, to find the capital to have a bunch of kit. But yeah, planning being the the biggest thing when you when you're looking for a gym with a unit like this, parking that the, the council just any council around the UK love to throw the parking problem at you. Um, so yeah, I'd say uh, for me was logistics because obviously from I'm originally from from Stratford from the Midlands so when I decided I wanted to start up it was just finding the right location to start up yeah. so you had to then see where's the contracts up where can you tend and where can you do that and then you had to actually do the business plan like the reason I start I started out first in St Helens was I looked at it from a, a business standpoint because St Helens is in the middle of Liverpool uh, like Cheshire, Warrington, Manchester, and then Wigan up north. So you could work with different people if you expand. That was the biggest thing picking. I, I thought come up north or go down south. That was the that's what mainly took me quite a while to sort of to sort of decide. So that I'd, I'd probably say that one picking picking the right sort of lo- location. Yeah, just don't, never go into open any business thinking it's going to be easy because it's the the startup is never going to be no, I don't think it. I don't think I know anybody I've ever spoke to that it was just plain actually, sailing it's never it's never that actually, way actually actually what I done I agree with you I think the what I thought it would take to run a business to what we actually did was night and day yeah same I, with me same I, with, I, even though in my head I was like yeah I'm prepared to do all the hours I'm prepared to do all this you you don't really know what you're getting especially that like, I'm here a lot the first week can be a bit like oh oh geez like I, I don't think I so whatever you plan for, probably add twenty percent on top of that, and then you'll be fine. 
<laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd probably say that. Um, what three intangibles do you think an entrepreneur needs to have? I'll, I'll let you go first on this one. Okay. Um, I'd probably say the most common one is, I'd say the most important, hard working. I, I yeah. literally always used to think to, you know, when everyone would go, oh, you have to be the first person in the last one out. I used to think that was all nonsense. But I remember there was there was a point the first six to six months to a year where I was I had staffing, I was lackadaisical. The business just didn't grow. Up until probably about a year and a half, the business stagnated. And then yeah. after that, you know, start to pick it up and then you see the correlation. So I'd probably say hard work. The next one is thinking outside the box. Yeah. It, in innovation's really, 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 really important, I think. Because I think there's on, on a daily basis, there's problems that crop up, and if you just think about it in one zone, you won't go. You know, you won't go anywhere. And then, setting foundations. Yeah. I think setting foundations is really important because you have to prepare yourself to grow from what you are right now. So, like, I like to think that on year by year, if you saw who I was, I'd be a different person. Year one to year two to year three, even I'd say go back last year not probably the same person i am now i think you have to set you have to set the foundations in place for you to evolve i think anyway yeah go on, go so on i think the hard working thing is kind of a given um i think that kind of falls into back of being passionate about what you're doing like i love this so when i do the 14 hour days it doesn't feel as bad because i honestly i love i love sitting here seeing people so that's one of mine the think outside the boxing is probably something, if you ask me, I didn't really think about it at the start of the year, but like for me, near the end of this year, just a small, a small story on it, is I was thinking like, I need to find a way of marketing the gym just a little bit different to Google ads and Facebook ads and leaflets. Like, yeah, that works and it has, it has its perks and the guys at Fitnessworks team help me with the ads and stuff and they do a great job. But I was like, I'm in a village, it's very community driven and I love the community I built. So I just need to do something where, you know, if I, if I can give back a little bit, that's giving back to the community, but it's also helping my brand awareness. So like, for example, going back just before, just after this lockdown, the, in the village here, we have a, a small calf, which they do amazing coffee there. And um, it's everyone knows everyone knows it in the village. If you if you live in Bidford, you know about the cafe in Bidford. So I just went up. I went there, introduced. I, obviously, I was chatted to the owner. I paid I paid the cafe for one hundred coffees, and I gave it out to the community for free, first come first serve. And then they just gave out a free day pass with every coffee that was collected. So, okay. and I posted up in the forums, and it went down really well. People were really appreciative. Um, and it also got my name out there and got our business out there. So innovation, that kind of what, what I see mine as is how can I market my, my business away from the traditional way of doing it? Because every gym, every gym does Google and Facebook ads and do the videos. Like I do that anyway, but like I'm in a, I'm in a village. How can I help the community while getting the brand awareness out there? And that's what I did. And it worked a treat. I suppose that's the, yeah, that's thinking outside the box, isn't it? Yeah, so that's when he said that, I was like, mm, yeah, do you know what? That kind of falls into what we did. Passionate hard work. And do you know what else I've learned is just be be good at org being organised. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, that This year, that's bit me quite a few times because I've, again, like I said earlier, I'm, I'm quite new to it, where I think sometimes the lack of organisation has kind of bit me a little bit here and there. Not scheduling my day well, not not using a diary, which from about October, I started managing my diary and paper and on my phone on a, like a, um, a Google app thing, which, which, which made my life far easier. Um, so if you're not naturally organized, learn this, learn to be organized. Regard, I don't think that really matters what industry you're in. I think you don't need to be. Um, so yeah, that yeah, organized, think, um, thing outside the box and just be, be passionate slash hardworking. Yeah. Yeah, I think organisation is a big one, isn't it? You have to kind of learn because I'm one of them who I wasn't, I'm probably still not as organised as I should nah, be. Sir. But it's just kind of like learning how to keep everything, mo you know, moving and, and such and so forth. Yeah, if, if, if you're not very good at it, you'll soon learn when you get into business that you need it. Okay, question three. How important is it to have a good work-life balance? That's a big one. 
That's a very uh, good for me, it's important, but it's not always it's not always the easiest or possible thing. Like I said, for me, for example, I'm I do probably seventy five percent of the hours here, eighty percent. I do have help. I do have um, Sam that helps me, and my sister does a few hours for me too over the weekends, which gives me the Sunday off so I could be with, with Emma and my daughter Ada. But it's, it's hard because it's important, but in the early stage of the business, I don't think it's always possible. In fact, I think at early stage of the business, it's probably not possible. Because I, I think the business, okay, it is probably possible, but I think the business needs a lot of your attention a lot of the time. I would say for me, this is one I'm I'm actually I've improved on a lot in the last sort of year or so because it's one I used to be really really bad because what you got to think is like you were saying there I would probably say the business takes up majority of my time most days seven days a week so you'd have times I remember when me and my, my girlfriend first got together where we'd have plans something at work would come up I'd just have to leave so and that was like the first couple of years where it's it's difficult. You do have to have someone who understands that. But then in yeah. the last sort of year or so, I've started to improve because it's like, you know, you've got a bit of a responsibility to, you know, keep in touch with your family, you know, have time for your, your, your girlfriend, your, you know, your family, your friends and stuff like that. And I would say taking time away from work helps me focus because there was a time where I was just, bus- you know, focused completely on the business 24-7 and it was it was draining. You you can't keep that going for you know for long periods. The mo the thing that I've got is I'll just say to myself, okay, I work this and this this day, but this day for sure, I'm not gonna work. No one's gonna bother me. I'm gonna have this yeah. day off to either go see family, friend, you know, whatever I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna think about work just for that one day. But then the rest I'll you know go crazy. So I think you have to make a conscious decision in yourself to make time for you know make time for things because yeah. work work and especially when you've got a business that's your baby so it can it can consume you can't it it can it yeah can, for me know. even when i'm at home and i am half switched off i'm not always because i'm always on i'm always like i have a habit i'm on my phone all the time so like for me i'm always thinking i'm always looking at other gyms not not one local here but gyms that i look up to i'm like okay what 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 are they doing like what kit are they using blah 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 i'm like okay and I'm always just noting down things. Okay, I want to get this. I want to do this. I want to do this here. Um, why do Emma? Why don't we do this? And then I'm looking at the merch that we sell. Blah blah blah. And so like, even when you are switched off, there's always something in the back of your head that's always lingering. Always. But like, for example, I don't tend to work Sundays. So my sister helps me out. I'm fortunate that my family help me out a bit wherever I need to. So if I have like, if I have to go for a meeting somewhere last minute, like with uh, with the fitness works guys, or if I have to go do this or do that. I can get cover here and I have a few lads here that help me out a lot, but it's never, it's always, it's, it's, you're never really not switched on to it. Like I could go out, for, well, we can't because it's lockdown, but if I was to go out for a meal with Emma, we won't be able to have that hour and a half without me bringing it up somewhere. We'd have to talk about it at some point because that'd be something I want to speak about. So it's just one of those, isn't it? Like you said, it's your baby and that's your pride and joy and that's just kind of, but so, so is my daughter. So when I do have time off, I do try and just kind of leave it. Okay, and then very last one. Uh, do you have any interest outside of the business that c- can take your your mind away from it? Uh, not not so much really. Um, I've just started doing like YouTube stuff, which I really enjoy doing. Um, content and th- content's my my interest right now, but it kind of falls into into the into the business. Like I use the gym as a place for my content. Any training footage I can use my own gym for. Um, so yeah, I've started doing that sort of thing. I have I have other hobbies, but it doesn't take away from here. What I've tried to do over the last the last sort of this year, I found that I needed something like com- like outside of work, com- something competitive. I used to play football, can't anymore. Not in the best of shape. So I got on really in- I got on really into golf. Oh uh, yeah, everyone been, loves golf now. Oh mate, you got you got to you got to mate. It's it's my thing. So I've gotten to to at the start of the year, I was absolutely terrible. To I'm getting steadier and steadier, and that the reason I love it is because all I'll do is for four you know for four to six hours 
on any given day. I'm going to leave my phone in the car, just go, you know, go for a walk. That's probably start. And I know my girlfriend's probably hoping I say her, but that's probably, that's probably starting <laughs> to take, you know, it's probably starting to take my attention away from, you know, from work and stuff. But those are the main things. It's just, it's just an escape, isn't it? Trying to find yeah, something, something outside of work to keep you going. But those, you know, I think, um, I think as we get busier and I have a few more, I have a, I have a few more hours covered here. I will take some time out to do things that I enjoy. Like I'm a big pool slash snooker player. I love that. I don't get a chance to play much anymore because obviously I'm here. Um, but my focus right now it is here. So until we're busy enough where I can say to someone, oh, do you know what? I can give someone some, a few hours here and there where I can have some time off to go do my own thing. Obviously that's a dream. So yeah, that's what I'll be doing. Oh, okay, perfect. Oh, okay, that was that was it. Thanks, thanks very much for popping off. I know it's been a bit hit hit and miss and everything, but thanks for finding the time to sort of pop on. No, it's the time, man. Then yeah, that's that's it. Perfect.